All right, guys, uh, this is Abed, Civil Aviation for AR1. Talking about a safety directive we are releasing because we got this part from a customer and he had about uh, 100 or so hours on his gyroplane with this new tail, but he, uh, a lot of trail ring, maybe like five, 6,000 miles of trail ring. Uh, it's related to a tail that has this, uh, uh, you know, the balance horn, okay? So this, we do believe, is a one-off because we just received another machine here that has trailered just about as much with the same kind of tail, and we inspected it, and there was nothing wrong. So maybe they're on their trailer, they went over some really rough roads or something was not secured right. Um, it is possible it's a one-off, but it's important enough to check. Uh, we did have on that on that same machine before, um, when we did the annual, we did find that they also had the roll and pitch block um, that was damaged from trail ring as well. So it is very likely it is a one-off. However, uh, it's a part that I d we don't want to mess around with and uh, people do trailer and we can control what kind of roads they go on and how they tie. Um, but anyway, you can see this is the top side. So it's broken on the top. So it has definitely gone up and down like this. The whole rudder has gone up and down, up and down, and fatigue cracked. Um, so what we are recommending is uh, putting this type of uh, extra part on that gives it reinforcement. And uh, that will actually make it much more difficult for this to happen, uh, no matter what you're doing. So. Let's see, we're talking about this part right here, the reinforcement part to install that. Now we installed it on this one because we inspected it, there was nothing wrong. We installed it anyway, because this uh, customer also trailers and you don't know who's gonna trailer or not and how they're gonna tie it. Um, and it's a critical area. So you can see the original part, the plate is on the back side of the fiberglass. Um, Again, if you have the old tail, not this type of tail, it does not apply to you. It only applies to tails with a uh, horn and hinge. So what we are recommending is to do this anyway, inspect it and then do this. You can get this part from us in a kit with the safety directive. And you can do that. You will need a number 25 drill bit, a pop rivet gun, um, some safety wire and safety wire pliers, of course. And if you are not comfortable, a mechanic. It should take only about an hour, hour and a half of work. So how do you do this? Uh, you have to take the rudder off. How do you take the rudder off? Uh, well, the rudder is attached to this pulley. You're not gonna take the pulley in, off from the rudder. You're just gonna loosen the tension in this cable. How do you do that? Okay, to do that, number one, you're gonna come to your right-hand side here on the back seat, under the back seat, you'll see the turnbuckles, safety wire turnbuckle. You need to take this pin, this pin out. Uh, that whole pin, not just the safety pin, but the whole pin comes out so the rudder cable is loose. You're gonna cut off the safety wire. You're gonna mark it, uh, mark the turnbuckle with a Sharpie and you're gonna turn it about, turn it loose about four turns. You're gonna count that, write it down, whatever and you're gonna mark it and count four turns loose. That will release tension enough so you can take that pin that is holding the thimble into the turnbuckle out. Once that's out, um, there's no tension on this cable. Uh, usually you want 40, 45 pounds of tension. There will be no tension. So once there's no tension, you're gonna come back here and you're gonna take that cable uh, out of the groove completely, okay? completely out. So there is no cable in the groove of the pulley. Okay. Once that has happened, these covers that we showed on you know, on the other gyro have been taken off already. You're going to come here and you're going to take that hinge out, meaning uh, that castle nut needs to come down, the locking pin needs to come off, and that AN5 bolt there has to come up uh, using a flathead screwdriver or something, it should be able to come out and then the upper hinge is loose. Now that the upper hinge is loose, these plates though are still holding it. You cannot take, you cannot rock the rudder back at an angle. So 
to be, allow it to be rocked back at a slight angle, the cable has to be loose, which we already did. And with 7 16th wrench, you're gonna take these boards right there. You don't have to take them completely off, but you have to loosen them up enough that they're hanging down so you can rock the vertical stabilizer and the tail forward a little bit. Uh, maybe you need a second person, but you'll just rock it forward a little bit as you rock the rudder back that way a little bit, and that should allow enough rocking back and forth that this rod end comes off from the plates there, okay? That will allow you to take, and then you just put pull the rudder up, and that will allow you to take the rudder off, and it'll kind of look like like this. So you do not take the pulley off, okay? Leave the pulley on on the rudder. Okay, now that that's done, your work begins. You have to mark this rod end and the nut, and you have to take that off because you're going to slide this part on that that tube and it's not going to slide on if this this uh, rod end and uh, jam nut is on so you're going to have to loosen it before loosening it mark it measure it or count the threads because you want the exact same location length okay uh, you're going to undo that and remember that this uh, rod end may be left hand turn, not right hand. So your lefty tight, you know, righty tighty, lefty loosey may be opposite. So please keep that in mind. Uh, then you have the two part structural glue that you're going to put on the back of this plate and also on on the inside of the uh, circular tube, and you're going to slide that on. So there will be structural glue all over the place. Um, you wanna make sure that the structural glue does not go in this hole where the threads are. You can put some tape on it, blue tape on it or something. So that nothing, no glue goes in there. But anyway, there's glue basically all across. You're gonna lightly put it all, slide it all the way back and let it sit. And then after it sets for about an hour, you can use your number 25 drill bit and mark those holes that are already drilled in the outer plate, but you have to go through with them uh, into the backside plate. You're gonna drill that out and then use your pop rivet gun and do the cherry max rivets that comes with the safety directive, okay, to your kit. So you're gonna install it like that and this is what it looks like. Then, of course, you're gonna put the rod end and jam nut back, tighten it up to the original length and the original number of threads, okay, like this. Okay, once that's done, um, you're gonna mark, torque mark it, so you know what to inspect it. In your inspection, you wanna see if it's loosening or tightening. Um, and then you're gonna reverse the whole procedure. Basically, you're gonna bring your rudder, that rudder back, and you're gonna install it. You're gonna install, put it down here. You're gonna put it, put that rudder down here. Okay, and, and Again, rock the vertical stabilizer forward so you can align this rod and into those plates. Once you have them aligned into those plates, um, you can put that AN5 bolt and that castle nut by hand. And then I want you to check this area right here. You can see once they're aligned on the top, it's very important that there is no gap if there is gap, you need to do this, these 10 millimeter washers, because it has to be sitting down. Otherwise, only the top hinge is carrying the weight of the, of the rudder. And if it goes up and down, it will allow movement and that can crack, okay? So essentially, once that's done, you're gonna secure this. It's just snug tight, not very tight. And then you can put the quarter pin back in um, and you can install the covers here if you want although before installing the covers probably what you want to do is put this cable back in the groove like that and go back to the front and you're gonna put the thimble 
into the turn buckle, put the pin through, lock the pin, the safety wire is off, so now you have to tighten the turn buckle and you're going to tighten it exactly the same. If you had loosened it four turns, you're going to tighten it four turns so your original tension comes back. Then you're going to safety wire the turn buckle. If you're not sure how to safety wire it, you should be using a mechanic or yeah, the best thing is to use a mechanic if you don't know how to safety wire a turn buckle, but it is described in FA uh, part 43 appendix D. Um, and you can follow those procedures to safety wire it. Anyway, once that's all done, you have the tension in the cable, banjo tight, 40, 45 pounds. You have this guy secured and dried overnight with structural glue in the back of the plate and also in the circular area so it's touching the circular pipe and the rivets are as a, as a backup. So this uh, re, um, part reinforces that whole area. And now it's it's this, this area right here, the cover. Now, because we did this reinforcement, this opening in the cover that you originally had is probably not gonna be enough. And you have to put blue painter's tape on, mark it quarter inch below, quarter inch above, and use a Dremel or some tool like that to actually, uh, you know, trim it down, make this opening higher so that you can see right there so it doesn't, it doesn't touch that part right there. You see that? And up above and below. So you have to do that to this cover parts, the two cover parts, and then you can put them back on. That's it. Um, again, this is out of abundance of precaution. We did not find any other gyroplane to have that. We have looked at this one and another one, but um, it's just important to do that. Um, I think many people will trailer. You don't know what kind of roads you're going on, how it's secured exactly. So this kind of overkills the problem and it's a good thing to have.